Welcome everybody to the Scale Up Show. This is your host Ryan Staley, and I have a very special guest with me today. I have Max Votech. Max is a pharmacist turned entrepreneur and co-founder of Customer Times, which he's doing some amazing work over there. A leading digital consultancy that helps businesses tackle the toughest tech challenges. Something cool about Max is he spearheads the AI-powered innovations across life sciences, consumer good, and manufacturing. Also does quite a bit of work in sales and marketing, which is near and dear to my heart. He's also leading the growth initiatives over there. Max, welcome. Happy to have you on the show, man. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I know you've been working with medium-sized big businesses all the way to Fortune 500. And you know, based on the pre-show, I'm, I'm loving what we're about to talk about. So real quick, before we get too deep into it, though, can we talk about what stage of the journey Customer Times is at in terms of employees, revenue, and offerings. So can you just do a real quick rundown on that so everybody has some context on where you guys are at in terms of the journey? Yeah, sure. We started as a boutique consulting firm uh, many years ago, specializing in CRM. So uh, customer experience, UI, UX, and we grew into a global company, 1,300 specialists, uh, 300 uh, clients um, across the world and industries like manufacturing, life sciences, healthcare, financial services. So, and we expanded our expertise uh, to platforms like Salesforce, SAP, Microsoft, and uh, evolving in AI space and alongside what client needs. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that you started off uh, at the CRM level and then you've expanded into so many areas. One thing I never asked you is like, why did you decide to focus on pharma and manufacturing and financial services? As, as like key verticals, I should say. Yeah, so uh, pharma has been, uh, you know, very close to my heart all over the years uh, as a former uh, pharmacist. Uh, so I've been uh, working for Big Pharma for almost a decade. And uh, I was passionate about uh, implementing technology for, for Big Pharma. That was almost my passion, the automation for medical reps, uh, sales, marketing, and uh, been always passionate about bringing new technology and new uh, new tools uh, for uh, for for this industry. And basically, this industry is a regulated environment, uh, as you mentioned, as well as uh, financial services as well. And manufacturing is less, uh, but uh, it's the toughest uh, place for innovation when uh, the, yeah. the the industry is so regulated. So regular. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very heavily, uh, very heavily. So that's why I'm excited to talk about, you know, what we're going to cover in this, this part one that we're going through, because like one of the things that <clears throat> I think is really cool that you guys are doing is, is delivering breakthroughs in medicine and health due to AI with, with some of the biggest pharma companies in the world. So like, obviously there was the case study with Moderna where I think they had like 800 GPTs they created. Um, and did a, a large company roll out with that. However, like, want to really talk through like what you're doing in the space, what you're seeing as opportunities, and then how you think it's going to transform health. So, so give us a little breakdown, man. Like, what are you seeing? Yeah. So, uh, so basically, like, the, there's a lot of innovation happening uh, in in pharma world right now and uh, healthcare world. So uh, you reminded me like several years uh, back, we worked with a large pharmaceutical company to tackle the, the, the challenge with institutional memory. And at that time, AI was not ne nearly as fast, <laughs> as popular uh, as it is now. So we developed a design memory tool that helped uh, the client with capturing and organizing all of the uh, thought process, documentation, learning management events, uh, associated with development of a clinical trial. Back then, we had to gather all the data manually. So now AI and large language models uh, makes it much quicker, faster to connect all the events, uh, all the document endpoints, uh, decisions, and the thought process and uh, logical reasoning and the data to gain insights into how the process can be improved in the, in, 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 in the future. So. And like the innovation in uh, pharma been uh, mind blowing in uh, um, like la la last decade. So with uh, digital twins for patients, uh, with uh, like a lot of innovation around uh, sales and marketing, 
a lot of innovation in how how uh, big pharma is communicating with patients as well with all all the like patient clubs portals um so it's been an exciting decade well and 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 I love that right like institutional memory I haven't really heard of it broken down it's funny like the last guest I had on uh was talking about digital memory which is very very similar right he was referring more on the customer journey and that was Jason over at rev.com of like all the conversations and languages of in formulating a digital memory like I know you mentioned it's not totally there uh in terms of leveraging the large language models now we've seen examples of it though with like Bloomberg rolling out their specific company GPT, if you will. I think Goldman Sachs did as well, and then Ogilvy, perhaps. Um, now, what you're talking about, though, on the pharma side, is probably potentially much denser information with all the clinical trials, right? Is that kind of where you're coming from and saying like, there's still we still need technology to catch up on a little bit before you could totally leverage that, or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so think of, of it as a way to give clinical trials uh, uh, teams like a superpower. So the ability for researchers to um, straighten up the, their uh, uh, decision making and the, the, the logic that they apply to uh, bringing certain uh, endpoints of, uh, of the clinical trials to uh, and the ability to remember everything literally everything and to build on past experiences efficiently it's like having a roadmap that only shows when you've been but uh highlights the best roads forward right so mm -hmm. and 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 basically with these tools companies can capture every single step of the trial process decisions data uh articles insights and make that knowledge accessible for for the next trial so basically it's not happening uh in in this way right now so uh, sometimes it's just paper notes sometimes it's uh digitized there are certain solutions but the the adoption rate for pharma is not on 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 that level yet and now they can avoid like unnecessary duplication of work and focus on what really matters creating more uh, innovative treatments and like quickly and more efficiently. Yeah. And instead of starting from scratch, uh, they, they teams can get hit the ground running and designing better trials and faster and make fewer mistakes. And regulators uh, can come knocking, asking for evidence the team is ready. So like they, they have the, all the, the, the reasoning, all the uh, documentation in place and uh, basically uh, like in the ideal world, uh, regulators can talk to uh, design memory tools as well. So they can audit uh, the train of thought of uh, researchers uh, like directly from AI perspective, uh, not, not, not from humans, because sometimes the reasoning is so long. So it, it might be a chain of uh, hundreds of decisions. Yeah, that's pretty extensive. I mean, I did, I was leveraging 401 the other day and I, I was very purposeful in terms of like trying to understand how many chains of reasoning each each prompt was going through and on average it's probably about like seven or eight so to have 100 plus is massively extensive for one decision right um yeah. so do you think that's what like and I, I know you've done work with salesforce do you think that's what salesforce is trying to do with atlas um have you heard of atlas at all it was talked about at dreamforce i don't know if you're there or not um did you hear about that at all or no yeah i heard about it and i, I think uh, salesforce is doing an amazing job in uh, terms of uh, like creating the trends on, on its own and uh yeah i'm, I'm really excited with um, um like the the progress we're, we're seeing with einstein and and the, the following technologies that uh, that they're using so and uh, implementing the uh, health cloud uh, and creating uh, like uh, CG cloud, uh, consumer goods cloud. In I think w w w with the uh, help of AI uh, assistance uh, agents and um, while we'll see uh, the improvements in uh, large uh, context windows in upcoming years, uh, it would make uh, perfect sense. So. The, the, definitely the company is on the right track with that. So it would uh, definitely bring uh, like the thought process 
uh, and 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 the reasoning in uh, uh, service agents uh, on on much better and much faster, faster level, so that uh, the service agents can uh, actually know all your context and uh, stick to the point while answering any customer's requests on the fly. Um, if if you're working with any contact center right now, so that they they, they spend minutes. Uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes just to authorize you and to uh, get the context out of your previous conversations with previous agents. It takes like forever to, to get the answer with all these modern tools. So like my hope is it would make uh, our life much easier and much, uh, much better. Well, let me ask you that, right? Because like the buzz is, you know, from Agent Force and then Microsoft talked about this as well. Even HubSpot mentioned it. Uh, and then, you know, Sam Altman's talked about it at OpenAI with agents being on the forefront. Autonomous agents is like, is what I want to focus on because agents can be used very loosely, right? It could be an assistant, it could be a co-pilot or it could be autonomous um, based on the masses. Uh, how, well, like, what would you say is ready right now or agents that like you're super impressed with that are automated right now. I'd love to hear like your thoughts on anything you've seen in those areas and, and, or anything that's really impressed you. And if not, that's cool too. Um, I haven't seen that advanced agents yet. So I've been uh, experimenting a lot with my team, uh, with, uh, creating institutional memory for our own needs for brainstorming um like inside the companies so sometimes we take notes uh, voice notes and uh, we use notes from copilot as well and uh, based on these notes it help us to formulate our strategy faster and help us to communicate this strategy much faster and uh, i also see the the trend uh, with bots and agents uh, with uh, with memory uh, as 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 a breakthrough trend right now so like Everything which which we see on the market, uh, like brand new, is uh, is a bot or agent with a memory. And like as as far as we can get more inputs into this memory, the quality of solutions, the quality of uh, uh, data, the quality of context will be higher. So the more data you feed, the 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 more quality you would get uh, with the newer models. And and we can see a significant improvements. Uh, with the latest models when you combine them, right? So, and I, I also see the trend uh, uh, in um, in transformers and like people who can integrate uh, like smaller models with larger models uh, and different tools on the fly with no code, low code uh, systems. You can uh, like combine your memory with uh, like uh, modern uh tools and uh, like sources of information on the fly and it can drive significant uh, uh increase in speed of your decision making and and speed of your um like um release management or mm -hmm. in speed of uh like what you can deliver as a strategist as a company owner as a founder to your team as well yeah yeah and and, and... Is there one no code tool that you love using or that you think and there's a lot out there right now? Any that you love using that could do what you're talking about where you're mixing model sizes and types and everything like that? Yeah, so I've been prototyping myself uh, a lot with Mike.com. I think it's an incredible tool for building a small prototypes. So you Mike can combine is that what it was? Mike Mike com? Oh, make.com. Make.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's an amazing tool. Uh, I love it. So, and you can combine perplexity, open AI, uh, you can combine it with mid journey. You can combine it with, uh, runway, uh, uh, ML with, uh, like for making videos on the fly. And, and basically I need a prototype for a uh, journalist, uh, writing the news for, uh, uh, AI and healthcare, like in probably 40, 30 minutes. Uh, nice. producing great uh, great uh, videos and great photos and and very very nice formatted articles for any social media on the fly into just minutes and it's it's like almost no code there 
so which is really exciting yeah i've heard um a lot of good things about make.com and i've used it on limited occasions i need to use it a little bit more but like when comparison comparing it side by side with like zapier and other tools it's like very very economical as well too so it's good price point as well um well so max unfortunately we are up on time for this episode where can people find you where can they find more about customer times and then we will revisit you for part two coming up yeah sure right so you can find me on uh, linkedin uh, my profile is there and i'm, I'm, I'm publishing a lot so uh, as well as, as you can see all, all the latest information on customer times on customertimes.com website welcome to visit us and thanks for having me it was exciting yeah man it was a blast i love what you're doing i love your passion for ai is totally aligned with mine and you're doing some really cool things in uh, heavily standardized industries, which is uh, definitely something that everyone should focus on because there's some amazing breakthroughs happening there that I don't think are being talked about enough. So thanks for being on the show, man. Yeah, pleasure meeting you. Thanks right. for having me. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. And we will see you all on the next episode. Thank you. Talk to you. <laughs> Sorry, man. I don't know where this cough is coming from. Great work, okay. great work.